In this video, I'm injecting a brisket with a very light solution of salt brine. I'm brining it overnight, cooking it on my offset smoker, and then comparing it to a control brisket to see if the brine brisket is any better. So let's get smoking. I'm starting with two briskets. The first brisket is a brined and injected brisket. I started with a 0.75% salt solution by weight, and I injected it all over the brisket in the point in the flat until it had taken up most of the four cups of water that I injected into it. And then I put it in a vac seal bag. I vac sealed it and I left it overnight to brine. It probably got around 10 hours of brining. I didn't go for a full 24 hours because I really want to compare the brisket in this video to something that is reasonable for a home cook, i.e. something that you would just wake up in the morning, you'd season your brisket, and then you'd throw it on the offset smoker. Is this any better than that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this package. And for these briskets, I'm going to be using some SP salt pepper garlic blend by Spiceology. Thank you, Spiceology, for sending me this rub. I'm excited to try it out. I'll flip the brisket over. I don't need to spritz it with water as a binder because it's already really wet. So I'm just gonna start applying the rub right away. Pours nice and easily, this is great. And the fact that it already comes in these shaker bottles is totally awesome. Okay, I'm going to get the sides now. Whew, very garlicky, this rub. But luckily, over the course of a 12 hour cook, I think most of that garlic taste is going to be really subdued at the end and it's gonna taste really nice. Flip this guy over and get the other side. And there we go, this brisket is fully rubbed. So I'm going to rub the control brisket and then after I've done that, I'll let the brisket sit out for about 30 minutes just to soak up that salt on the exterior of the surface and then I'll put them on the smokers. In the meantime, I'm heading out to the smoker right now to light it up. All right, to light this firebox, I've got some briquette charcoals in the bottom, just a few, and then I've got some splits of actual hardwood on top of them. I'm gonna light them with my grill gun. If you guys wanna pick one of these up, Really awesome little piece of kit. It uh, lights fires in about 60 seconds and uh, there's no smoke when you start up. So you eliminate all the problems you have with charcoal chimneys smoking for 15 minutes. So grill gun, check it out. If you guys don't have one, really highly recommend it. Okay, now that the fire is going, I'm going to hook up my steam injector. I've got a little steam cleaner that I picked up from Amazon here, and I've drilled a hole into my Oklahoma Joe's Longhorn reverse flow, and I'm just going to hook it up like this and switch it on. And that's gonna inject steam into the cook chamber. What I've found in previous experiments using it on an offset smoker is that it cooks the brisket faster, it results in better bark, better smoke flavor, and better moisture retention. So I've started to use it more often and I thought this was a good video to use it for both briskets. So I've got both briskets here. The one that's been injected has a toothpick in it and the control brisket doesn't have a toothpick in it. So that's how I'll be able to tell the difference. The smoker is preheated. I'm gonna put them side by side on the smoker, farthest side towards the stack, point towards the firebox, like I typically place my briskets on smokers. And that's all we're gonna do for now. I'm going to shut the lid on this guy. I'm going to let these briskets cook at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for the first four to five hours, and then we'll check back on them and ramp up temperatures. All right guys, it has been four hours, so we're gonna take a look at our briskets here and see what we got. Let's open this guy up. Whoop. Okay, interesting, interesting. We're getting some good bark formation around here and on the back brisket too. So the brine brisket looks pretty good. The brisket, the control brisket looks actually a little bit darker. There is this bald spot in the middle so I'm not sure if that was just seeing some moisture and the bark hasn't set up there yet. One thing I did want to mention guys is that you'll notice I'm not using the steamer anymore. That's because it broke. I've used it for a couple videos now. It's probably got maybe 20 or 30 hours of continuous use, some 12 hour brisket cooks on it. It was not designed for that and I think it finally got too hot. It's a really hot day out right now and it was right by the smoker and it just pooped the bed. So I might have to get another one or maybe I'll 
buy a different product, I'm not sure, but for now it doesn't really matter that much because we've got a big water pan and it already got some steam at the very start of the cook. And I think everything is looking good so far. I'm just gonna give it a temp with my Chef's Temp Final Touch X10. We'll give it a temp in the point. So that's 142 in the brined brisket. We got 151 in the control brisket. So the brine brisket is lagging behind the control brisket a little bit. In the flat of the control brisket, we got 153. In the flat of the brine brisket, we got 153. So pretty consistent. So these are looking good. They are definitely entering the stall right now. So we're gonna bump up the temperatures to around 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'll check back every two hours or so. We are at the 10 hour mark. So we're gonna take a look at these briskets and we're gonna see what they look like. Let's open this guy up. Okay, wow. Nice and dark. Got some really nice color. I'll just use my chef's temp to give it a probe in the very center of the brisket. 185 in the brined brisket and around one, oh, around 180 in the control brisket. In the flat here, we've got 196. We've got 176 in the control brisket. And then way back in the point here, we got 183 and 193. So the brined brisket is ready to wrap but I'm going to leave the control brisket on for probably another 30 minutes to an hour before I wrap it. What I'm gonna do when it hits 190 is I'll wrap it in butcher paper with clarified butter and tallow, and then I'll wrap it in some aluminum foil tightly, and then I'll hold it in my holding chest overnight for 18 hours at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll do the taste test. Actually guys, I just realized I made a mistake. This is actually the control brisket because I switched their locations to help them cook more evenly. So the control brisket got finished faster than the brined brisket. It got to 190 a lot faster. The brined brisket is still around 175, 180. So I figure it'll probably hit 190 in about an hour. So the brined brisket is cooking a little bit slower, which is what I expected because it has a lot more water content in it to push out before the temperature can rise. So I'll wrap this guy up, wait an hour, and then wrap the brined brisket, and then we can put them in the sous vide holding chest. Before we get to the taste test, I want to thank Chef's Temp for sponsoring this video. I've been using the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 for over a year now, and it's proven itself to be super reliable, durable, and accurate for my everyday barbecuing. In addition to its ultra-fast and accurate temperature reading, it also has a fully rotatable probe design and a backlit display, so I can see what the temperature is even if it's pitch blackout, which a lot of the time it is when I'm smoking a brisket. It has a magnet on the back so I can stick it to the smoker or the fridge when I'm not using it, which is super handy and it has a really cool hold feature that allows me to reach way back in the smoker, take a temperature of some hard to reach meat in the back, and then hit the hold button and then I can pull it out and clearly see what the temperature is, which is really nice to have. An IP67 waterproof rating means I can easily wash it off by submerging it in soapy water, which is important to me because my thermometers are always covered in grease and sauce at the end of the day. I highly recommend the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 and I've used it long enough to confidently recommend it to you as a leading instant read thermometer option that's priced very low for the value it provides. So if you need an excellent instant read thermometer, click the link in the description section below and use code STBBQ15 to get 15% off your purchase. Again, that's STBBQ15 for 15% off your Chef's Temp Final Touch X10. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, guys, it is the next day. These briskets have been holding for 18 hours at 150. We have the control brisket on our right and we have the experiment brined brisket on the left. So I'm gonna cut into the control brisket first. Let's give this guy a slice. Oh my god, this is a big board, but two briskets don't really fit on it very well. Let's slice into it right about here. Slicing really nicely. I'll give you guys a look before I slather everything in tallow. Oh, that is looking delicious. Now, let's get a slice. Well, first of all, let's prevent this from oxidizing. And now let's get a slice of the flat. And I'll give you guys a close up. Woo, that's a pretty nice slice, if I do say so myself. Let's give it the pull test. 
pulls apart effortlessly. Let's taste it. Oh man, this is a really good brisket. I'm really happy with this one. Mmm, that's great. Really juicy, salty from the rub that we added, the um, salt, pepper, garlic from Spiceology. Really good rub. Mmm, barky, fats rendered. It's a good brisket. I don't know how the brined brisket is going to fare against this because it's already a really good brisket, but let's slice into the point of the control brisket first. I'll save those for burnt ends and I'll get a slice of the point. Oh man, this is, I can tell already this is gonna be good. Again, this is the control brisket. Just look how it is dripping. It's amazing. Whew. Pull test, pulls apart easily. God, I love that. Oh man, I love the point. So good. Mm. This brisket is awesome. It's one of the best ones I've cooked in a while. So I don't know guys, I don't know how the brined brisket could taste any better than this because this is a really good brisket. So let's shift on over to the brined brisket. I'm not noticing any differences outwardly. I mean, the appearance looks the same. Nothing got more burnt than the others. I mean, it's got some crispy bits from the edges on the edges of the flat and the point but that's pretty typical so let's cut into this guy again it's slicing really nicely give you guys a nice old close-up here beautiful looks very similar to the last brisket we just looked at let us take a piece of the flat here can't really see what i'm doing so hopefully it's going to be about a quarter inch Looks like a really nice slice of the flat. Let's do the pull test. Come on camera, get in focus. Pulls apart really easily. Let's give it a bite here. Oh yeah, that's good. This is really good. It's exactly the same doneness and taste as the other brisket. It's just got a little bit of an extra zing from saltiness all throughout the meat. So I like this brisket so far better than the control brisket. Not by a lot though, not by a lot. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but it's enough to be noticeable. Okay, let's take a piece of the point because I know I injected a lot of salt into the point. Take a big old piece. <laughs> That's a pretty Mondo slice, but Let's see if it, uh, let's see if it pulls apart. Pulls apart very easily. Let's give it a taste. So I'm gonna give you guys my conclusions, but first I'm gonna pour myself a little dram of scotch, some Highland Park 12 year old Viking Honor, because nothing goes better with brisket than a little dram of scotch. So what do I think about injecting brisket with a low salinity brine? Well, I think it improved the quality of this brisket by maybe 30 to 40%, so it was noticeable. I could taste the saltiness all throughout the meat, but it was very subdued, so it just gave a little bit of zing on the sides of the tongue, but it was noticeably better than the control brisket, even though both briskets were cooked perfectly. The bark, the smokiness was both the same. The brine injected brisket just tasted a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do in the future is I'm gonna continue to brine inject my briskets when I can and when I have the time to do it overnight. I might experiment with doing it for a day or two or longer, or maybe I'll just continue to do it for you know eight hours overnight, eight to 10 hours. It did improve the quality of the brisket. It held up during the long hold for 18 hours. It doesn't taste beef jerky like, it doesn't taste pot roasty. I don't think the salt detracted from it at all. It definitely added to it. So I'm gonna continue to do it. Let's give this a taste. Ooh, that's spicy. Spicy, oaky, this is pretty good actually. I've never tried Highland Park before. 
good scotch. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to get more involved in the Smoke Trails Barbecue community, consider joining my Patreon. You'll get instant access to a Discord chat server where you can chat with me and the community one-on-one. -on -one. You can get access to me a lot quicker than if you leave a comment below. But you can also leave a comment below. You can subscribe. You can like this video. You can follow me on Instagram. You can join the Facebook Barbecue Nerds Facebook group. Did I get that right? <laughs> You could join the Facebook Barbecue Nerds group or you could just leave a comment below. Appreciate you guys. I will see you in the next video and happy smoking. Ah. Mm. That's tasty. Damn, that's good scotch. Good brisket, good scotch, good day.